Israel has to finish that job. They have to finish it quickly, strongly, and they have to get back to life again because it's taking too long. They have to finish the job. You're saying go in, win, and finish. You gotta win, you gotta win. After mostly staying quiet about the ongoing war on Gaza, Trump is now signaling that he'd be even more aggressive in backing Israel as the international community watches in horror. Now, political bribes have a lot to do with it. Before we give you those details, it's worth getting into Trump's latest conversation with Sean Hannity on this particular matter. Let's watch. AOC plus three, you know, Israel was the most powerful lobby in the country 15 years ago. Today, between Tlaib and AOC and all of these people, what they're doing, Israel they don't have the backing that they once had. You'll give it to them. Yeah, I have the, I'm good, I'm good. But they don't have the backing. Even Schumer has become like a Palestinian. Chuck Schumer, Jewish, always strong for Israel. He's become like a Palestinian. He called for elections in the middle of a war. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very bad thing, it's a very sad thing, and it's a very dangerous thing. Absolutely disgusting, and for anyone who supports Trump and declares themselves America first, what you just heard was not America first. What you just heard was Israel, I am going to give you more American funded weaponry. Okay, I'm going to make American taxpayers fund the bombs that we're going to send over to Israel. Okay, I mean, he's just signaling. By the way, I just love the fact that he's, he's the guy who says drain the swamp. The reason why you're hearing him signal the way that he's signaling here is specifically because He's been meeting up with Miriam Adelson and begging her for money. And I'm gonna give you the proof of that in just a moment. But it's just amazing to me. Like, he's not America first. He's, what do I need to do to get into a position of power first? That's who Donald Trump is. Yeah, so wait till you see what he promised her in order to get the money. It's unbelievable. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. All right, so uh, first, he says finish them. When Nikki Haley said uh, finish them, wrote it on a bomb when she was visiting Israel. Uh, mainstream media doesn't mind, they love Nikki Haley, they love neocons, they love Israel uh, You know, doing whatever they wanna do, right? Uh, but progressives were uh, honest and fair, and they're like, no, that's terrible, right? And they say the same thing to Trump, so they're fine. Anti-war right-wingers were like, ah, see, that's why we had to pick Trump. Yeah, Nikki Haley's a neocon. Now, do anti-war right-wingers actually exist? Yes, they do. Do they actually hate the neocons? Yes, they do, okay? But unfortunately, they're massive hypocrites, and they don't understand what Trump actually is. So when Nikki Haley says it, the anti-war right wing's like, oh, look at that, <laughs> that's why, it's a good thing we didn't pick her. Trump says the same exact thing, finish them, finish the job. And they're like, "Oh, he's anti-war. <laughs> All right, man, whatever gets you through the line. He's not remotely anti-war. Uh, and then he, massive lie after massive lie. If you watch the whole interview there, the, when he said AOC plus three, you know what he was referring to? He, was, he said, "Oh, people are denying that October 7th even happened, like AOC plus three. They didn't deny that the October 7th happened. He just made that up because he makes up everything. He's just a pathological liar. He can't stop lying. And then, but the most amazing part of that was Schumer. He's like a Palestinian now. He uses it as an insult. Like, can you believe he's so low now? He's like a Palestinian. Hey, oh, he's betraying everybody. He's like a Palestinian. Chuck I Schumer mean, invited. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to address a joint session of Congress, a man who is overseeing a genocide in Gaza. He's like a Palestinian. Chuck Schumer bowed his head after giving that house speech, that speech on the Senate floor. That's right. I mean, look, and he says, "Oh, I can't." Hannity says, "I can't believe they're calling for elections in the middle of a." War. No, it's a parliamentary system that happens all the time. Ari Emanuel uh, runs WME, incredibly powerful, one of the most powerful guys in Hollywood. Uh, loves Israel. Wrote a letter about how you know everything's anti-Semitic, blah blah blah. But he said we got to get rid of Netanyahu. He, he doesn't particularly care that much about Palestinians, but he's like he's destroying the reputation of Israel. I love Israel. I don't want him to just. And that's fair. That's his position. I respect it. Right? Is he a Palestinian now? 
Is Ari Emanuel betraying Israel for calling for getting rid of Netanyahu? These are who the hell are you guys to say that Schumer and Ari Emanuel are aren't Jewish enough or don't love Israel enough? It's a it's absurd. And that's the kind of vile crap that Donald Trump says 24/7. But like we said, it's actually going to get way worse. So uh, let's get to Haaretz and their reporting on uh, the meetings that Donald Trump has been having with Miriam Adelson, who wants uh, Israel to annex the West Bank and wants Trump to help in that effort. So Trump is desperate for cash, writes Haaretz, and he's holding a fire sale on future presidential authority. Anything goes for the man who believes that a presidential victory will save him from prison, which scares him more than anything else. So there is an unintended consequence to pursuing legal action against Donald Trump. And it's the fact that he's even more obsessed with winning and he'll stop at nothing to win because he wants to pardon himself and he wants these indictments to go away. So let me continue though, and if you're wondering what Trump is gonna do, you'll get a good idea by digging into the gravy train that funded him back in 2016. So in order to understand what's happening now, let's just quickly remember what happened in 2016 with Miriam Adelson's husband. So after Trump had won the Republican primaries in 2016, he was left without donors to face off Hillary Clinton. That's when Las Vegas casino mobile Sheldon Adelson offered him a deal. $20 million in exchange for moving the US Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. All in all, Adelson heaped over $90 million on Trump. The embassy moved to Jerusalem against the advice of Trump's aides, and Adelson became Trump's most influential donor. So Trump delivered, Sheldon is luckily dead, so you would think you don't have, you don't have to worry about him anymore, except that's not the case. At first, everyone was under the assumption that Miriam Adelson would kind of stay out of politics. In fact, she herself claimed that she wouldn't be involved in politics as much as her husband was, but that turned out to be BS. Adelson didn't name the sum, but is expected to spend more than she and her late husband did four years ago. This would make her 2024's biggest campaign donor. And Trump invited Adelson to Shabbat dinner at Mar-a-Lago in March. Trump didn't come out of that dinner with the campaign contributions that he was hoping for. But he had several phone conversations with her following that meeting. And also a few days later, he sat for an interview with Omer Lakmanovich and Ariel Khanna of the Adelson owned Free Daily. So Adelson owns media companies. So he sat down with an interview with them and said the following. I'm a very loyal person. I've been the best president in history by a factor of 10 to Israel because of all the things I do, the embassy, Jerusalem being the capital. But then you have the Abraham Accords and then you have the Golan Heights, Trump told them, referring to American recognition of Israeli sovereignty in the territory. Nobody even thought that was going to be possible. I'm sorry, I, do, I wanna, uh, you skipped one sentence accidentally. And I think it's a very critical one, right at the top, it said, he said, I've been loyal to Israel. So uh, MAGA, America first, you sure? Because he's bragging about how loyal he is to Israel. They're all loyal to Israel. They don't care about our country. As long as there are moneyed interests in this country that bribe our politicians, our politicians are gonna put a foreign country before the American people. That is happening right now as we speak. And it, it, it boggles my mind that the America first crowd who I actually, when it comes to certain elements of their beliefs, I actually subscribe to them because I do think that we need to focus on making this country better. We need to focus on improving the lives of Americans. But how am I supposed to take them seriously if they refuse to even criticize? Like they wouldn't even criticize Trump for this. If you're unwilling to even criticize him for this, that makes me think you're not actually serious about focusing on this country and making this country better for the American people. So now let's get to the most important quote. Um, what Mayor Madison really wants from Trump's, and remember guys, this is Haaretz in Israel reporting this, really wants from Trump's second term is an Israeli annexation of the West Bank and a US recognition of Israeli sovereignty in all the regions of the land. Under these conditions, there's no room for the Palestinian Authority and nobody to sign a peace accord with. So. If Miriam Adelson gives Trump enough money, he will say you are now in charge of foreign policy. And if you would like that foreign government to illegally annex the West Bank, which could start a gigantic war in the Middle East and which would be 
just the, the biggest violation of international law in our lifetimes. He's like, as long as you bribe me enough, I will. And this is all out in the open, Haaretz is reporting it. She talked about it in New York Magazine, it's, etc. Because there's no accountability. So now they're just rubbing it in our face. Yeah, we're just gonna buy Trump and he's gonna do exactly as Israel orders him to do. Because there's a wealthy American who thinks that Israel is 10,000 times more important than America. Look guys, just look at the thing that already happened. New York Times reported it. So $20 million to Trump to move the embassy. Well, that's just buying US foreign policy. You're America first and you're okay with that? Yep. That some donor gives Trump $20 million and then he's allowed to set our foreign policy? And he moved our embassy, you know, Trump got impeached because he was saying, "Oh, I will or won't help Ukraine based on whether they give me dirt on Joe Biden. I know, but they don't that's wanna- That's why, hold on, that's affecting foreign policy, that's why he was impeached. This affects foreign policy a 100 times more. Moving our embassy could have started a giant war in the Middle East. And Trump did it for 20 million, nothing. Almost no coverage, no politics, no Democrat even complains about it. I wrote about Sheldon Ellison in my book, not because of Israel, but just as like a spectacular example of legalized bribery, because he's given $100 million to Trump in 2016 and in 2020. He got everything he wanted, not just this stuff, economic interests, lower taxes, banning internet gambling, because he runs casinos, etc. But to me, the one I always tell you guys about, he gave Miriam Adelson the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That's the highest honor America has. He threw it in like a tchotchke. Like, oh yeah, you're bribing me, okay, and I'll give you some Ginsu knives and a Presidential Medal of Freedom, because this country's a joke. It's just nothing but corruption wall to wall. And of all of the corrupt, disgusting politicians in this country, including Joe Biden, including all the corporate Democrats and all the corporate Republicans, the most disgusting of all is Donald Trump, just selling pieces of America for whoever's the highest bidder. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.